Good afternoon to you. Mark Sada, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Sunday, July 2nd, 2017. In the tropics this afternoon, just as I'm starting to record this, the National Hurricane Center has updated their tropical weather outlook. We are now looking at a 50% probability of this system out in the open tropical Atlantic here of becoming a tropical cyclone over the next five days. Right here is where it's located, the center of the mass of clouds, if you will. Doesn't have a well-defined circulation yet, and this is the formation area over the next five days that it would likely be in. And yeah, you know, 50%. So toss of a coin right now, 10% over the next 48 hours. And we will take a look at this in more detail uh, in just a moment here. In fact, let me escape this and we'll go to that. There we go. So this is the wide shot of the Atlantic Basin. And I can point out where this system is right there. And you can notice even in this particular shot, uh, a visible satellite picture uh, animation, very, very dry, stable air nosing its way down towards the southwest from this Saharan air layer. And it's really cool because you can even see the edge of it, like right there. Look at that. That's just amazing. And uh, if you know what to look for, you can spot these kinds of things. But yeah, uh, it's going to choke this thing off a little bit. But water temperatures out here are so much above normal. I say so much. I mean, maybe on average of close to a degree Celsius. And that might not sound like much, but it's over such a large area all throughout this region. Water temperatures are above normal that there is plenty of energy and moisture for this thing to tap into and the Saharan air layer probably won't be able to completely smother this and make it just die on the vine so to speak and the other thing about it uh, let's go back to the Hurricane Center site um, it's moving westward and this is a key thing here at about 10 miles per hour what does that mean why is that significant well it's not hauling but to the west at 20 or 25 knots like we have seen with earlier you know Brett was really moving it as it came through this area and you think back to prior years when we have seen very strong high pressure over the Atlantic with screaming trade winds and a mixed up ocean out here and cooler sea surface temperatures relative to average etc these tropical waves will move westward in some cases extreme cases 30 miles per hour this is moving west at 10 and that is significant because that means it's not going to outrun itself. It won't have sort of relative shear going on where it's moving faster than the overall flow. Uh, in other words, this is kind of a positive for this to develop. So we need to really start watching this closer and closer over the coming days. In the meantime, we don't want to ignore the Pacific. But the good news is, as you can see here, even though we have a couple of areas that are primed to develop, both of these should stay well off the coast of Mexico. So if you have any interest in the Baja through the resort areas of southwest Mexico, no problems at all. Even if these spin up to become hurricanes, um, no biggie. Okay, maybe some increased swells and the surfers will like that. Certainly going to keep an eye on this and we'll talk about this more in the coming week as well. Now going back to our system in the Atlantic, it's not quite designated as an area of investigation, though that may be coming soon. Now that the five-day outlook shows it up to 50%, uh, it would be invest area 94L, I do believe. And remember, they use the numbers 90 through 99 and the letter L for Atlantic, right? And the 90 through 99 is just a designation to sort of get the ball rolling um, on a suspect area. And um, you know how police have codes for something happening and the military does uh, and so this is just a similar thing instead of just calling it a disturbance eventually it'll get that designation of 94L and you can see that the precursor to it is sitting right here south of this very large area of Saharan air it's more dominant and smothering if you will farther to the north up near the Canaries um, so where it's located now generally moving westward and you can see it, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of an erosion of the Saharan air off to the west that this may have a chance. And uh, the GFS has been pretty insistent and consistent on it for several days now. Other models are off and on. And even the GFS, sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. It's weak, it's strong. 
you never know. But there it is in the central Atlantic, and it looks like it's on its way to trying to get going. And we can see that even better with the vorticity signature. I talk about this a lot, and here's why. You start to see this round appearance bundling that energy, and it's trying to get its act together. When I show you this tomorrow, it should be even more organized than what we're seeing today. So you get your bearings here as to where it is. It's southwest of, let's use yellow here, southwest of the Cape Verde Islands or Cabo Verde Islands. And when we look at the model guidance on this, I want to show you what the latest GFS shows. Let me point out what's what, just so we're all on the same page here. This is the west coast of Africa. All right, and here's the Cape Verde Islands. It's going to be hard for me to get used to calling them the Cabo Verde or whatever. It's just easier to say Cape Verde. Anyway, the system, this is the uh, 850 millibar chart, and this is 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, and we're looking for spin or energy in the atmosphere, what we call vorticity. And uh, you see these different storm systems here over the North Atlantic, mid-latitude storms just dancing along in the jet stream. Our system that we're watching, almost 94L down here, uh, located right in here. How do I know it's there? Well, you know, the satellite picture and me knowing relative locations of stuff, but just looking at these wind flags in here, these wind barbs, you can see, you know, we had easterly flow over here, and then we have uh, westerly flow over here, so it's kind of in this monsoon trough, and the center of the vorticity it kind of looks like it would be like right in here, as weak as it may be, there it is. You can see how everything kind of pinwheels around. There's broad cyclonic turning. So that's how we know where it is. So keep your eyes on this general area as I put this into motion and we go through the next five days here. All right. So this is the five day animation. And you see, there it is. It starts to develop inside that yellow circle that I drew, the oval. We're at about 36 hours. It's moving slowly. This is not racing off to the west or west-northwest at 20 knots or anything. And by the time we get to day four, it starts to develop, and it's south of this very potent uh, deep layer ridging over the Atlantic Basin that uh, should steer it to the west with time overall. You can see once again, it starts to take shape, and it moves on off to the west-northwest with time. I'll take the telestration away so you can see it better. And that by day five, it could be a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm, uh, and that's what's indicated in the five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center. And you can see there that it really starts to blossom after day three. And as we get towards the end of the animation here, I want to show you something pretty important. Okay, so here's 120 hours out, so I'm going to just go to a single frame. All right, so this is the 120-hour mark at the 850 millibar field. And again, you see it located here uh, east of the... Uh, northern Lesser Antilles, and another piece of energy coming off there, by the way. Here's the ridge of high pressure over the Atlantic, and you got this trough over here, and all of this will come into play later. We'll worry about steering when and if this develops. But we want to play detective here and try to figure out, is this going to try to develop? Does the GFS depict something that is accurate? Well, at the 5,000 foot level, here's your vorticity signature, and it's, you know, something there. So then we go up to the next layer of the atmosphere, and this is what I look for. Is it what everybody looks at? Is it what the specialists at the Hurricane Center look at? I have no clue. It's what I look at to determine the health of these systems. So the next layer that I look at is the 500 millibar field, and that's about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere, roughly. And so that's another layer up. Does this system reach higher into the atmosphere with its vorticity signature. In other words, is it growing in the vertical, and or is it still shallow and just a weak, convectionless swirl? And if we look out here at day five, there it is, just the beginnings of a reflection all the way up to the 500 millibar level. The most intense hurricanes will go all the way up to the 200 millibar level. Uh, Katrina did that. Uh, Rita did that. Another and other very intense hurricanes that we have seen. They go, their, their cyclonic circulation goes from just above the surface of the Earth all the way up, punching up against the end of the, you know, into the stratosphere. It's amazing what they can do. So, I look and I see, all right, at day five, does this start to reach up to the 500 millibar level? And it does. So, 
What does that mean? It means it's got my attention, and we should really watch this, uh, even if it goes on to develop and become Tropical Storm Dawn and turn out to sea. And, oh, yay, it missed everybody. You know, great for land areas. It shows us that this season is probably going to be very busy. Uh, a Cape Verde system developing, an African wave developing in July, early July, no less. We're not even, you know, at July 25th or something. This would have huge implications. And remember, Phil Klotzbach, uh, Dr. Phil Klotzbach at Colorado State is going to re analyze things. Of course, he has been, and, and a new forecast is going to come out, an update, um, in a couple of days here on July the 5th. And we're going to talk about that. This will have to be factored in. And believe me, he knows this stuff. These July indicators like this play a much bigger role than do the June indicators of early development. So there's a lot at stake with this. Not only something to potentially track and wonder where it's going to end up, but also what it means for the rest of the season. All right? So tomorrow's going to be really busy. We're going to have a lot to talk about. Um, probably going to need to do the update early, and we'll have to get to the sea surface temperature anomalies and all the things that I look at on Mondays on Tuesday uh, because I'm going to be heading out of town with the family doing some Fourth of July stuff. But before I do that, we'll at least take a look at the overnight models tonight and what things are looking like with this system. By then, I think it will be designated as 94L. So expect tomorrow's video discussion to be, you know, probably out before 10 a.m. Eastern Time. All righty. Have a great rest of your Sunday. It's going to be an interesting July, it looks like. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, and I will talk to you again tomorrow morning.